Hello, welcome to the Math Reflective. My name is Kathy Dixon. I'm a sixth grade math teacher in Illinois, and I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible after last week. Last week, we started school with students. We just had really kind of two and a half days basically so far, and I wanted to share with you my reflection and my experience doing an activity from the week of inspirational math on the U-Cubed website by Joe Bowler. So I did an activity called Visual Numbers, and students were given worksheets that look like this. So I'm not gonna take a long time to introduce it, but I'm gonna show you what I put in my Instagram stories last week as far as my experience with it. And then I wanted to reflect a little bit more and then I made a screencast video on it because I realized while I was doing it with one of, I did this with three classes. And while I was doing it with my first period, I noticed some things that I could have been more efficient with eliciting understanding from students. So then I started to almost do a five practices um, instructional routine with it where I started to write down as I noticed things that different partners were seeing as far as number three on the visual numbers activity it asked them to look for patterns and jot them down students weren't really digging very deep and at first they wrote like one thing and turned the paper over and said that they were done and I encouraged them to dig a little deeper and it was just really neat all the things that the students came up with the mathematical ideas all the prior knowledge we were able to activate so I started thinking maybe if I was more careful in how I selected students to share I had partners go up to the document camera and share their findings that maybe we could build and deepen our understanding as we went along I don't know if it's like anything that I did was that great but I just wanted to share with you some of the things that my students saw in some of their findings just in case you ever decide to do this activity so let's get going okay for one of my math classes today this would be my sixth grade advanced class we did Joe Bowler's U cubed number visuals activity and the first question says, write the number that each visual represents on your visuals handout. And this is the handout. So they're supposed to look here at this visual and write whatever number they think is represented by this. So it was really interesting to watch students because first of all, I did not give them much direction at all on purpose. I wanted to see how partners work together and I wanted to see how they interpreted the direction. So first there was a little confusion on where to write the numbers. They were starting to list them here. And I was, you know, reminding them they need to list them here. So, of course, most kids were writing one here. I had two girls that had a discussion and came to ask me about this. And they said, is it okay if we each have a different answer of how, what number this represents and why? I said, yes, because our objective is that you're going to collaborate and justify your reasoning. So, one of the students said that she saw this as three because she saw three distinct groups of three. And the other child said she saw four because she was looking at these smaller groups of four and they were asking if that was okay. And of course I prompted them, if you can convince your partner and justify why you think that, you can be correct in that reasoning and of course that's okay. And that's what we want to do as mathematicians. So that was really exciting to see. And then it goes on, what do you see in the number visuals? Do you notice anything interesting about the way the numbers are shown? Share your findings and discuss. And then it goes on to look for interesting patterns and describe the findings. And then we were gonna share out as a group. Honestly, the students only had about 10, 11, 12 minutes to do this. So we are not done with it, but I had them put their names on it and collect it. And we are going to revisit this either tomorrow or Monday. So the first thing that most students noticed, most partnerships noticed was the consecutive order that each visual represented a number and then one after that was the next number. So they labeled one, two, three, four, and so on, all the way up to 35. Some students explain this pattern as a plus one. So a second way to say it is that each visual increases by one. Another thing that some students said was as the numbers that represented the visuals increase, so as the numbers got larger, the circles got smaller. And of course, that's partly the spacing and being able to fit it on that sheet. But again, it's a correct noticing and any answers, as long as they can justify, would be correct. So I enjoyed hearing all of it. I also want to go back to number two on the question sheet where students had to just look for and recognize things that were interesting. And as I was walking around, as you saw earlier in my video, students were asking if it's OK if they have more than one answer because they disagreed what number was represented by that visual pattern. So if you look at what I wrote in red in the arrows, 
For example, let's look at 16 and a student said, I think it represents four because there's clearly groups of four or the student could have even said there's four groups of four. So students are definitely seeing factors, but they haven't used that word factors definitely. But bringing in that knowledge from number two that they already had different numbers that represented those visuals was important. And then we built on that understanding with the next reveal. If you look up at the top where I have the yellow circles, so I circled a group of three, students started to point out, well, this three is repeated in the nine because three groups of three is nine. So now they're seeing a multiplicative relationship. We were able to just briefly bring in that vocabulary and students were seeing multiplication. They couldn't come, quite come up with the word factors, but I pointed that out that those were factors. Um, three was a factor of nine. Students brought up several more examples like this, but what I tried to do is jot down on a sticky note beforehand. Once I got to the second time doing this, I was a little bit smarter and more strategic about it. The first class, I just kind of let them go and I picked random students. And then I was like, wait a minute, I'm seeing, you know, it increase in level of depth of what they're seeing here. So I want to make sure I'm being more strategic and bringing in that five practices of selecting and sequencing and then having them, you know, show their findings in a certain order will maybe help build the knowledge of other students. Another partnership can be seen, thinking can be seen in the orange circles that I just did. So if you look up at the top row at the six, dots are the six circles and then you see that repeated in the 18 and the student had written 18 slash six and I kind of figured I knew what they were doing but I was careful not to just say what I thought that they were doing and I was trying to elicit what understanding this this student had and I asked if that you know the student said it was 18 and six so one of them saw it as 18 and one of them saw it as six so I asked for more information about the 18 slash six so the student said it was 18 divided by six, which would be three, showing the three groups of six each. So that was so cool because then I said, wait, we were already talking about multiplication and now we're talking about division. So how can they be related to both operations? And you know, a bunch of students raised their hand, of course, and they said, well, they're opposite operations. I said, yeah, do you know what that's called? And there was a student who knew it was called inverse. So now we've already uncovered in just this you know, half hour activity, all this different vocabulary that I don't expect them to remember necessarily, but it is definitely activating prior knowledge and getting us ready for some of the work that we're going to do this. Year. If you look at the area shaded in gray, I also had students point out this multiplicative relationship at a diagonal. So they saw it was increasing by eight each time. Eight times one is eight, eight times two is 16, eight times three is 24, and eight times four is 32. So I definitely noticed as students were doing this that some partners, they wrote one thing in number two, what was interesting, and one pattern, they turned their sheet over and they said, oh, I'm done. And I said, well, tell me what it is you found. And then question them like, can I challenge you to think of another pattern that you might see? Think, you know, think a little bit more deeply about this, have some more conversation about this. And then I also, before I shared whole group with the second class, I had students find another set of partners somewhere in the room that wasn't at their table and discuss their findings. That way they had even more information when, they, when it came time to share whole group. If you look at the column of green shaded, on the very right side of this sheet, it was exciting because one student saw, oh, there was multiples on a diagonal. As we were talking whole group, students were pointing out, well, look at that last column, um, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. So then it sparked the interest of other students to dig a little bit deeper. And what was great is it reminded me of a number talk when they apply somebody else's reasoning or method and then look for it somewhere else and they're already deepening their own understanding. It was really exciting just in this one activity. Because this all happened kind of organically, the first class period, it was a little bit you know, less efficient. And then I was able to improve upon my own teaching and teacher moves. It was so exciting because it was a perfect example of how we're going to build our knowledge this year with this problem-based curriculum with Open Up Resources 6-8 Math. And I was able to show students, like, look at how much we learn from each other. We're always going to have think time. We're always going to be talking, you know, with maybe partners and groups, and then we'll bring it together. And, and I told them, once you hear another idea, you own it. Once it's out there, once you hear it, you own it. It's now your idea, too. If you focus on the smaller circles that make up circle shapes, the ones in red that I highlighted, they're a light red, you'll see that 
for the most part, they're on a diagonal. Number 25 is excluded in this, but I did not, actually I had one student out of my three classes say that all the ones that are circles are prime numbers. And I had already read that in the directions of this, but I was so excited. So I was trying to prompt students to look at the circles and see if they saw something interesting. Um, nobody else got it in the other classes, but it was a point that we were able to discuss and kind of um, bring back the word prime as far as prime numbers. So that was really cool. Another thing that I did not do that I would do next time is to try to extend the pattern and ask students what 36 would look like or what 37 would look like. It's something I could even do to follow up with them um, as a do now the next morning, just as a suggestion. Another idea that just came to me as I was looking at this a little further as I was thinking down the road in the school year with sixth grade um, content standards is exponents, the idea of exponents. So I was thinking of if you look at the configuration of four and 16, how the base is four and it's multiplied four times, then you would see that relationship between the four and the 16. Just a thought. Well, thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos about reflecting on how I do math in my classroom. Please put a comment below if you've used this activity before and you could give me any suggestions. I'd love to hear about it. And as always, I'm trying to reflect and have greater impact on my own teaching and my students. Are you ready for more?